الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَنْ يُتَعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah. Haddathani jama'atun min al-shuyukh bi isnaad kullin ila Sufyan bin Uyayna an Amr bin Dinar an Abi Qabus an Abdullah bin Amr bin Aus radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma anna al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal ar-rahimuna yarhamuhum ar-rahman يرحموا من في الأرض يرحمكم من في السماء. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in his tremendous hadith, this hadith in which every class from this series we have started with this particular hadith. This is a hadith that is مسلسل بالأولية. This is a hadith that the Imams of the past, they will teach their pupils this hadith as the first hadith they will instruct them with and teach them with. The ulama, they mention the significance of this is because ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ الْعِلْمِ رَحْمَ نَتِيجَتُهُ رَحْمَ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَغَايَتُهُ رَحْمَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ The ulama, they mention, they say this is because knowledge is mercy. The result of knowledge is mercy in this world, and the ultimate goal of knowledge is mercy in the hereafter. We have reached the next hadith and Abi Muhammad Abdullah bin Amr bin Aus radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma qal qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la yu'minu ahadukum hatta yakuna hawahu تَبَعًا لِمَا جِئْتُوا بِهِ إمام النووي قال إمام النووي حديث صحيح to the end of his statement the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم as it comes here on the authority of أبي محمد وأبو محمد عبد الله بن عمر بن عاص رضي الله تعالى عنهما he said that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said none of you truly believes until his desires or her desires are in line and follow that which I have come with Imam al he mentions he says hadithun sahihun he said this is a hadith that is sahih ruaynahu 
في كتاب الحجة بإسناد صحيح In any event the ulama they differ as relates to the grading of this particular hadith وضعفه Imam Ibn Rajab Rahimahullah Ta'ala Imam Ibn Rajab he graded this hadith as being da'if, as being weak. وَبَيَّنَ وُجُوهَ تَضَعِيفِ And he mentioned the reasons why he graded it as such, why he graded it as being weak and unauthentic. This particular hadith from this particular direction And Al Hafid ibn Hajar, he mentions in Al Fatih that this hadith actually it has that which substantiates it. وَجَعَلَهُ مِنْ حَنِيثِ أَبِي هُرَيْرَةَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَنْهُ From another direction, it comes from the hadith of Abu Hurairah, and that narration is a narration that Al Hafid ibn Hajar. He says that that particular narration, that it is authentic. Wherein, it is said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, or wherein, it comes that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يكون هواه تبعا لما جئت به that none of you truly believes until his or her desires are in line and follow that which I have come with. I.e., this is the exact same wording. Naam, the exact same wording. So from that direction, from the hadith of Abu Huraira, Al-Hafid ibn Hajar, he said that this hadith is authentic. وَقَالَ مُحَدِّثُ Madina, The Muhaddith of Medina, Al-Shaykh Abdul Muhsan, Al-Abbad Al-Badr, he mentions this, and more than this, inside of his explanation of this particular hadith, and he also mentions وَقَدْ صَحَّهُ النَّوَوِي فِي الْآخِرِ الْأَرْبَعِينَ And also Imam al-Nawi, he graded it as being authentic in the end of the 40 hadith. In the end of his 40 hadith, as we have reached yani, uh, the end of the 40 hadith, or towards the end of the 40 hadith, we have reached this hadith. And Imam al-Nawi, he mentioned that this hadith is sahih. So Imam al-Nawi, he graded this particular hadith as being sahih in any event. Those ulama who grade this hadith as being authentic, then it is clear and nothing else really needs to be said as relates to that. But those ulama that they have graded this hadith as being da'if, as being weak, they grade it as being weak. However, they mention that the meaning of the hadith is true. That the meaning of the hadith is true. So for those ulama who have graded this hadith as being weak, they mention the meaning is true. And those ulama that have graded the hadith as being authentic, then, of course, the meaning is true. So in any event, the meaning of the hadith is true. Naam, the meaning of the hadith is true. And that is that none of us truly believes until our desires follow that which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he came with. Qala Al-Allama Al-Shaykh Abdul Muhsan Al-Abbad Al-Badr Allah Ta'ala he mentions, he says Nafyu Al-Iman Fi Al-Hanith Nafyu Al-Kamal Al-Wajib He said that the negation of Iman, the negation of faith as it comes in this particular hadith then it is there to negate the completion of it. Naam. It negates the completion of Iman. But it does not but it does not negate the origin of Iman. Naam. Meaning that the person who does not live up to this one hundred percent, then they are not considered to be a kafir. Naam. They're not considered to be a kafir, but they do not have complete Iman. Naam. In that, in that point. And I want to point this out as um, the Alama is going to mention later on 
But this shows us here that what? That Iman amongst the people is not the same. That everyone is not on the same level of Iman. There are some people who their Iman is greater than others. And there are some people who their Iman is less than others. Not everyone is on the same level of Iman, but rather Iman has different what different levels and people are at different levels and have different levels of Iman. Naam? Because if it negates the completion of Iman, this, this means that what? That some people, their Iman is more complete than other people. Naam? That makes sense? طيب. The Imam he says, وَقَالَ النَّوِي وَالْعَلَامَ Excuse me, the Alama Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Al-Abad Ta'ala, he mentions, he says, قَالَ النَّوِي that Imam al nawawi he says, في الشرح الأربعين in his explanation to the 40 hadith. Because Imam al nawawi he has his own explanation to the 40 hadith. So inside of his explanation to the 40 hadith, Imam al nawawi he mentions, he says, أي أن الشخص يجب عليه أن يعرض عمله على الكتاب والسنة. He says, so therefore, it is obligatory upon an individual that they weigh their actions, they evaluate their actions in accordance to the book and to the sunnah. So each and every one of us, we have to evaluate our actions in, in accordance to the book and to the sunnah. How do we know what action is good? How do we know what action is not good? So on and so forth. It will be based upon what? Based upon the book and the sunnah. So we have to look and we have to present our actions and evaluate our actions based upon the kitab and the sunnah. We have to perform and bring forth our actions based upon kitab and sunnah. hawahu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam That we have to go against our desires and we have to follow that in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he came with. So every single one of us we have to look at our actions, approach our actions from the standpoint of making sure that they are in line to the book and to the Sunnah and we have to go against our desires in the event that our desires are not in line with the book and the Sunnah. In the event that we want to bring forth actions that are contrary to the book and the Sunnah then we have to go against our desires and make sure that our actions fall in line and follow the book in the sunnah. Imam al he mentions, he says, وَهَذَا نَذِرُ قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى And this is the like of the statement of the Most High. وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَدَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونُ لَهُمُ الْخِيرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ and it is not for the believing man, nor for the believing woman, that if Allah and his messenger have decided an affair, that they will have any type of say-so as relates to that affair. It is not befitting for the believing man, nor for or for a believing man, nor for a believing woman, that when Allah and his messenger have decided an affair, when they have ruled and passed a judgment on a particular thing, that they will have any type of say-so whatsoever as relates to it. Absolutely no pushback whatsoever. Okay? Now, let's bring an example so that it can really hit home what is being spoken about here and what is required. Let us evaluate our actions and see whether or not they coincide with the book and with the sunnah. If you want a car, if you want a car, you want to purchase a vehicle, you have to make sure that your actions coincide with the book and the sunnah. You have to make sure that you purchase that car in a proper manner. 
So when you purchase that car, you have to purchase that car, and it has to be with what? Halal money. And it has to be what? In a halal manner. So if you purchase a car, and that car is purchased with halal money, and is purchased in a halal manner, it is purchased in a manner in which is following the guidance of the book in the sunnah, following the guidance of the book in the sunnah, then your purchase of that car is correct and you purchased it in the proper manner. But if you go to purchase a car and you really, really want that new whatever type of car is your desired car, whether it is an EV, electric vehicle, or traditional type of vehicle, whatever it is, small, big, SUV, whatever, compact, coupe, whatever, and your desire is really, really, really want that car, but you don't have enough money to get that car, or you do haram things to get the money to buy that car, then you did not buy this car in the correct way, and your desires are not following the book in the sunnah. Your desires have to follow the book in the sunnah. So in other words, let me put it another way. If you want that car so bad and you know that you cannot afford that car, you can't afford that car. And the only way for you to get that car is for you to go down to the car dealership and then you take a loan for that car. You get that car on a car note, then you have violated you have gone against the book in the sunnah and you have put your desires in front of the book in the sunnah. So you got that car on a car note because you didn't care about taking interest because you care more about your desires. You got that car on a car note because you didn't care about the book in the sunnah. You didn't care that you got to pay interest. You didn't care that you're going to pay riba. You didn't care that you're going to put yourself in a position where an Allah and it is going to be at war with you. With a promise, I said I'm going to be at war with you. You didn't care about none of that. You just wanted that car so bad. You wanted that car so bad that you got that car like that. Or you helped somebody get a car like that, putting your desires ahead of the book in the sunnah, then you have violated. You have violated. In order to practice this hadith, this means that if you want that car so bad, and you cannot afford to get that car. And the only way that you can get that car is on a car note. To implement this hadith means then you walk away from it. You don't worry about trying to buy that car. Because you're not going to do that which is haram to get it. You're not going to violate the rules and the regulations of the deen for a car. So you walk away. To implement this hadith in this example means you walk away from it and then you buy a car that you can afford that does not involve anything haram. That's how the Muslim is supposed to be. This is how, what we're supposed to encourage one another to do. Not that we encourage one another, yeah, go ahead, get a credit card. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, get a, get a, get a, get a mortgage. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, get a loan from the bank. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, you know, pay interest because it's only whatever interest rate. No, come on, man. This is not how we're supposed to be as believers, but we call the good we forbid evil. Anyway, it's unfortunate that the example in which I had brought up happens every day. Happens every day. Happens every day with people who say they love Allah and His Messenger. Happens every day. Even amongst people who say that they're upon the sunnah, doing the likes of these things. Why? Because they, they just wanted that car that bad. That car was just that important. Well, I'm going Imam al he says, فَلَيْسَ لِأَحَدٍ مَعَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَرَسُولِهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَمْرٌ وَلَا هَوَى He said, he said there is not for anyone to, along with Allah and his messenger, have any say-so or any desire that will supersede that which Allah and his messenger have ruled. 
Now, it's not for you. It's not for you to say, yeah, 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 I know. Riba is haram, but I want that car. Yeah, I know. Riba interest is haram, but I want to go to school for that, so I'm going to take that student loan. Yeah, I know that riba interest is haram, but I want that house, so I'm going to take the loan from the bank and I'm going to get a mortgage. It's not for you. You don't have that right. You don't have that say so. It's not for you. It's not okay. Now, Allah Ta'ala has given you a free will so you could do it. You can hurt yourself if you want to hurt yourself. You can play yourself if you want to play yourself. You can destroy yourself if you seek to destroy yourself. But you're never going to be justified in disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially in those affairs in which you're not forced or compelled to do it. You're just doing it because you want to. قال ابن الرجب في الجامع العلومي والحكم إمام ابن الرجب he mentions in his explanation of this particular hadith والمعروف في الاستعمال الهوى عند الإطلاق أنه الميل إلى خلاف الحق he says that it is well known that the utilization of the word hawa, meaning desires, in an unrestricted form, in a general form, in a, a form that is across the board unrestrictively, then it means a leaning and an inclination towards that which is contrary to the truth. This is what it means when it just comes General like that, unrestrictedly. كَمَا فِي قَوْلِهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ Like in the statement of Allah, عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَلَا تَتَّبِعِ الْهَوَى And do not follow desires. فَيُضِلَّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Because it will misguide you from the way of Allah. This ayah comes in, 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 uh, in, in Surah Sad. And it's verse 26. Do not follow the desire. Do not follow desires. Why? Because it will misguide you from the way of Allah. So here we have an example of desires being used. And what is understood by it is being contrary to the truth. Because this is how desires it comes often. Naam, is that it means that you're going contrary to the truth. Also, وَقَالَ تَعَالَى And the Most High, he said, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ And as far as, but as for the one, and as for the one who fears meeting, the meeting with his Lord, and as for the one who fears standing in front of his Lord, Standing in front of his Lord, meaning when he meets his Lord on the day of judgment. He fears this occasion. In preparation for this occasion, and out of fear of this situation, what? So therefore, he prevents his soul from desires. He prevents his soul from desires. So we understand from this what? He, he has to pre pre prevent his soul from desires because his soul want to act in a manner that is contrary to the truth. Naam, so he has to prevent his soul from, his, from these desires that makes him want to act contrary to the truth. Allah Ta'ala, he says, فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَىٰ And that verily for this individual, the Jannah, the paradise, heaven, will be his abode. Naam. So these are examples of desires being used in a manner which is understood that it goes against the what? The truth. That it goes against the truth. Naam. وَقَدْ يُطْلَقُ الْهَوَى بِمَعْنَى الْمُحَبَّةِ وَالْمَيْلِ مُطْلَقًا But it could be used, desires, 
can be used in a manner that is general. And it could come with the meaning of love and of leaning towards, just in a general sense. Now, that a person loves and they, and they lean towards. فَيَدْخُلُ فِيهِ الْمَيْنُ إِلَى الْحَقِّ وَغَيْرِهِ So therefore, it will be understood what, because it comes in such a broad manner that what, that it could, it, it could be understood and enter into it that a person leans towards the truth and to other than the truth, right? So desires could be used in the language to mean what just a general love and leaning towards something. So that general love could be towards something that is good, and that general leaning could be towards something that is good. Or it could be the opposite, where the general love can be towards something that is bad, and the leaning could be towards something that is bad. So one does not necessarily ne uh, negate the other, but they both are possible. Now, so uh, desires also is used in this manner as well to just in general mean leaning towards something or having a love for something. وَرُبَّمَا اسْتُعْمِلَ بِمَعْنَى مَحَبَّةِ الْحَقِّ وَخَاصَةِ It could mean that a person also can enter into it based upon its generalities that what is that? The love of the truth specifically. وَانْقِيَادْ إِلَيْهِ and, 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 and being compliant to the truth. نعم? So all of this يعني, could enter into the word الْهَوَى so sometimes in the text you will find it coming and it bears these meanings, meaning that a person is loving something that is good or leaning towards something that is good or implementing and being compliant with something that is good. فَسُوِلَ سَفْوَانْ بِنْ عَسَّال هَلْ سَمِعْتَ مِنْ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَذْكُرُ الْهَوَى He said, Safwan, he was asked, Safwan bin Asal, he was asked, Did you hear the Prophet mentioning Al Hawa? Mentioning Al Hawa. Naam. Meaning Al Hawa that sometimes is used and is understood is just general. So it can mean loving something good, or also it can mean loving something evil, so on and so forth. Naam. So he mentioned the word Al Hawa. Right. So he mentioned. In response to this question, did you hear the Prophet ﷺ speaking about mentioning Al-Hawa? So he mentioned, he says, He said that a desert Arab, a Bedouin, he had asked yani, uh, 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 that a, a, a Bedouin, naam, سَأَلَهُ أَعْرَبِيٌ عَنِ, ال, عن الرَّجُلِ يُحِبُّ الْقَوْمِ وَلَمْ يَلْحَقْ بِهِمْ he, a better one asked the Prophet وسلم, about a man who he loves the people, but he, he did not catch up with them. He loves the people, but he did not catch up with them. Now, meaning what? He didn't physically catch up with them. Uh, meaning he didn't live in their same time. He didn't interact with them. He, he wasn't with them. Or he did not wasn't able to catch them as far as his deeds. Now, he wasn't able to catch them as far as his deeds. They, he was outclassed uh, deed-wise. فَقَالَ نَبِيُّ صلى الله عليه وسلم So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم He said المرؤ مع من أحب He said that a man will be with those whom he loves That a man it will be with those who he loves نعم. So if you love the people that are good You have love for those who are good But you haven't done anything That could comparably get you near unto them in the hereafter but you have a great love for them, then this love, this is from the strongest and the heaviest of good deeds inside of the scale, that love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have love for Allah azza wa jalla, love for that which he has, 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 has revealed, and, and love for his commandments, and so on and so forth, and love for the good people. Naam, this is one of the, the, the heaviest deeds a person can come with. Okay? So of course, we, we, we should love Abu Bakr, and Umar, and Uthman, and Ali, and the rest of the Sahaba. Now, are we going to be able to get anywhere near them as far as our deeds? No. The only way, the only way that we could be with them in the hereafter is by what? Is by loving them, having love for them. Now, but, so 
this is one of the shows is the the superiority of what and the truthfulness of, of Ahlul Sunnah is that in the hereafter, if you want to be with me, you have to be from Ahlul Sunnah because Ahlul Bid'ah, especially the Shia, they speak ill of Abu Bakr and Umar. Naam? You have individuals like say Qutb and the like who speak ill of Uthman. Naam? The people of the Sunnah, we speak good about the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and at the head of them, Abu Bakr, wa Umar, wa Uthman, wa Ali. If you want to be with them in the hereafter, then we have to have love for them. Naam is one of the, 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 the strongest deeds that we can do to, to be with them. So how much more so, how much more so the prophets and the messengers? If you love the prophets and the messengers, you're never going to be able to, we can't even catch the sahaba. So there's no way we can, we can catch up to the prophets and the messengers. Naam, the only way that we could be in their company in Jannah is by having love for them. Having a love for them. So this shows us the superiority of learning about them. The more we learn about their, uh, um, their, their biographies, now, the more we can have love for them. The more we learn about their life and, 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 and what happened in their life and, 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 you know, and their special characteristics and the like, then the more we can have a love and appreciation for them. So learning about the prophets is very important. There shouldn't be a single Muslim that this should be a concern for them to learn about the prophets, to learn about the, the messengers, uh, 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 and uh, specifically about the prophet Muhammad, uh, reading his biography, learning uh, yani about his biography, how he's seeing and contemplating how he used to interact with the people in the different uh, situations that he went through and how he you know, showed forbearance and patience and, and how he dealt with adversities and how he dealt with victory and good times and prosperity and so on and so forth. Now, to increase our love that we have for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is this this is the only way we're going to be able to be with them inside of the hereafter is that we have to have love for them. Naam. But it's a cautionary tale as well for those who yani, don't like the right people and don't love the right things because المرؤ مع من أحب that a man is going to be with the people who he loved. So if you love the evil, wicked ones, then hey. So be careful. Careful who you love. على كل حال. وَلَمَّا نَزَلَ قَوْلُهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ And when Allah Ta'ala statement it came down, تُرُجِ مَنْ تَشَاءَ مِنْ هُنَّ وَتُؤْوِي إِلَيْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءَ In Surah Al-Ahzab, in this verse 51, Allah Ta'ala, he says what translated means, You, O Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you can postpone those whom you will from amongst them, meaning the, your wives, and you may receive whom you will from amongst them, amongst your wives. Now, when this verse had came down, given the Prophet وسلم, this allowance, now, showing this the permissibility of this allowance, قالت Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha. Our mother Aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha. She said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَا أَرَى رَبَّكَ إِلَّا she said, I have not seen except that your Lord, he, that, that, that he is fast and giving you what you want. Uh, and the word that she used here was, hawak, what you desire. We see here in this particular uh, narration, the word hawa being used as well but it's not being used in a negative manner to point to something that is contrary to the truth. Naam? So although often it is mentioned inside of the text in something that is contrary to the truth, it's not always used in that same manner, but sometimes it is used to mean a love or to use to mean a leaning towards naam? something that is good naam? and that is in compliance with the truth. So it can come bearing this meaning as well. وَقَالَ عُمَرْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَلَىٰ عَنْهُ We have another example of the word hawa being used in a, a context that is outside of what may come to people's minds when they hear the word hawa. 
and this is inside of the Qissa Al Mushawara Fi Usara Al Badr Fi Fi Usara Badr. And that is the the incident where the Prophet وسلم, he sought advice as relates to what to do with the war captives from Badr, with the, the, the war, uh, with the prisoners of war from Badr. Naam. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala he said, Fahawiya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ma qala Abu Bakr. He says so fahawiya. And he used the word yani, that, that, um, that, that comes from what hawa. So he says, so the Prophet Sallallahu he was more inclined. Naam, so here, hawa is for to male, to be inclined. He, so, so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so the Messenger of Allah, he inclined to what, um, for, to what Abu Bakr said. Because Abu Bakr brought an opinion, Umar brought a contrary opinion, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he preferred, and he inclined towards what Abu Bakr said. Naam. And then he said, وَلَمْ يَهْوَى مَا قُلْتْ And he did not, and he was not inclined to what I said. He was not inclined to my suggestion. Okay? So in any event, this shows, yani, uh, Imam Nurajabi mentioned, he says, وَهَذَا الْحَنِيثِ مِمَّا جَاءَ إِسْتِعْمَالُ الْهَوَى فِيهِ بِمَعْنَى مَحَبَّةِ مَحْمُودَةِ He says, so the, this hadith, or the, yani, these hadith, then they show us the use of the word hawa to mean a praiseworthy love. Naam. So the Prophet Sallallahu he leaned towards and he loved what Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr's suggestion, and he did not incline uh, nor favor the suggestion of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhum. In any event, this shows us that what that the word hawa, it comes inside of the text bearing more than one meaning. It comes inside of the text bearing more than one meaning, and that is very important to know, especially for the student of knowledge and the Muslim who would like to be upon clarity in their religion to know this reality. Now, so it is uh, not black and white, and it shows another example how the deen is not black and white, and it shows us that those individuals who look at the deen as being black and white, then these individuals who are upon uh, danger. Now, this is a dangerous situation to look at the, the deen in black and white terms. Because, give you an example, and why it's so dangerous. From the people who look at things in a black and white manner, in the affair of Iman, is and are the Khawarij. The Khawarij, they look at Iman in a black and white manner. Likewise, that which is a Subdivision of the Khawarij, the Haddadiyya, they look at the deen in a black and white manner. Now, but let's get back to the example of Iman. The Khawarij, they look at the deen in a black and white manner. Now, likewise, on the flip side of them, the Murujia, they also look at the deen in a black and white manner. Although their result is the polar opposite of the Khawarij. Because the Khawarij, they say that sins affect Iman and major sins that make a person a kafir. That's it. Do a major sin, you're a kafir. Done. It's affected. You're done. You're out. You're done. You're a kafir. On the flip side, why? Because it's black and white. On the flip side, the Murujia, their conclusion is that sins do not affect Iman, and no matter what you do, you have the Iman like Jibreel and Mikhail and the prophets and the messengers. Now, so they say, no matter what you do, you got it. You got it, you got it, that's it. Why? Because they look at it as being what? Black and white. So looking at things as being black and white, it's not good. It's not good. Because who? Because who, who are you in a company of? You want to be in a company of the Khawarij, the Haddadiyya, and the Murujia? You want to be in a company of these individuals from Ahlul Bid'ah? No way, man. Those who they know what is correct and those who have a true concern for themselves, they don't want to be in a company of these wretched ones. They don't want to be in a company of these of these uh, despicable people who have this type of yeah, any, uh, innovation with them. No. 
They don't want to be in the company of those. Anyway, Sheikh Abdul Muhsin, he mentions from that in which we benefit from this hadith, Mimma Yustafadu Min Al Hadith, and he brings two highlighting points, two takeaways. The first of them, Wujubu Tibair Al Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Fi Ma Jaa Bihi is the obligation of following the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that in which he has come with. Now, um, this is very important. This is a must. There's no option. Okay? It's a must. We have to follow the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that in which he has come with. Period. Full stop. The second takeaway and point of benefit, or we benefit from the hadith, it shows us that the people are not on the same level of iman. Remember I said I was going to mention that, right? That the shaykh, he mentions it, I said we're going to mention it again. He's going to mention it again, inshallah ta'ala. Now, and that is there, is that what? Is that people are not on the same level of iman. Iman goes, it is very levels. It goes up, it goes down. Not everyone's on the same level. Why? Because it's not black and white. <laughs> it's not black and white. It's not what the Khawarij say. It is not what the Muruji as saying. People are on different levels. Naam. On different levels. It's not black and white. So these are two takeaways and highlighting points in that which we benefit from this particular hadith. Then the Shaykh he goes on to get into the next hadith, which is the 42nd hadith. Hadith number 42 from the 40 hadith of Imam Nawawi, but bithnilahi ta'ala, we'll leave that one until the next time. For Naktafi, we have the Qadr, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in, wa jazakumullahu khayra.